Uh, thank you indeed, Peter. It's good to uh, be home uh, with neighbors and uh, people who uh, can tell me about my own childhood. Uh, I have very vague memories of uh, those years, but I've been finding out some of uh, the neighbors down in, uh, in uh, Newport uh, and before to uh, being advised as to the proper names of who they were uh, on other occasions. Um, it's also great fun to, to bring uh, Ernie O'Malley home because, um, you know, he spent many years here. Uh, his heart was always in the West. Uh, uh, he was born in Castle Bar and uh, summered in, in Westport, but uh, then he spent all of these years down in the Newport area too. So um, I've done the prior uh, lectures uh, according to, with the friendships in the West of Ireland, and clearly uh, his heart was down here. Anyway, let me give you some, uh, some more um, general background on, on his family. Um, I want to cover you know, his, what I call his nationalist period, which is when he was out fighting. Uh, his post-nationalist when he was traveling uh, abroad as well as in America. Uh, then he comes home, he's married, he's got a pension. And uh, uh, later on, what he did in terms of his own uh, literary world and his cultural world, um, and um, indeed, including having children, uh, of which I am the youngest. And um, he basically died of ill health. And uh, you can really trace his ill health as so many of the lads who are out fighting uh, from those cold, damp days that they were doing their, uh, their work. Uh, uh, many of them uh, were uh, affected for the rest of their lives by the conditions in which they uh, lived for those couple of years. In mm -hmm. Father's case, it was uh, he refers to it as uh, eight years on the run, but in fact it was a little bit less, but you can give him for uh, the anxiety uh, in, in his words on that. This is the scene in, in uh, Castle Bar, the main street where the Malley family lived in uh, uh, when they got married in, in uh, 1894 through 1906. Um, um, it was, of course, pre-motor uh, uh, car. It all looks quite different to, today. Um, he was basically raised in that house, a three-story house, uh, with uh, some room up here if you want to come up. Oh, Peter, that's Peter. Yeah. Um, and um, he worked for Maliki Kelly, who was a solicitor, who goes on later to be the Solicitor General of, uh, of Ireland. Um, uh, when the, the family moved, it was thought that Malachi Kelly would take uh, his protege along with him, but when he got to Dublin, uh, there wasn't a job for Luke Malley. And so he went into the congested district board and uh, had a successful career, uh, ending up uh, handling the annuities for De Valera uh, in 1932, and Deb asked him to stay on. Uh, because that was a pretty arcane uh, type of knowledge that he had acquired over his 20 years working on that. Um, anyway, Father uh, always remembered the, the West. Uh, in his book uh, on Mother Man, Wound, he has very colorful descriptions of his early days down in Castle in, in Westport, uh, where the Malley family uh, summered. Um, he also remembered uh, the West uh, in his poems that he wrote in America. And the folklore uh, appears not only in On Another Man's Wound, but uh, when he came back here in the 30s, he uh, uh, went out and, and got uh, folklore from uh, some of the local people, and I'll be talking about that. Um, he also, uh, I noticed that many years later, uh, when I was looking at the types of paintings that he had acquired, that many of them were art of the West. Now, whether he went out and bought them specifically because they were of the West, or whether he bought them from art shows, which were down here, I'm not quite sure. But um, he liked paintings uh, reminding him of the West of Ireland. Uh, the family moved up. There were 11 children in the family. Uh, the family moved up. Uh, to Dublin in 1906, and just to show the diversity of many of uh, Irish families, uh, the Malley family, and this was a M-A-L-L-E-Y family, not an O'Malley family. Um, so I'm not related to any of the O'Malleys who were my neighbors <laughs> uh, down in Berjou. 
Um, <coughs> they were an Ahagawar, a Mali, who moved out near Balan Tubber. Um, and uh, <coughs> they, uh, the 11 uh, uh, children were spread out. Uh, so Frank and Albert, uh, Francis uh, and Albert, Victor, uh, joined the British Army, uh, as many people did. In, who needed employment uh, in a period of, of unemployment in uh, 1912, 1913, 1914. Um, Brendan and Desi, uh, Desi was the youngest, fought for the British Army uh, in, in the Second World War. Uh, the other uh, four following uh, uh, my father, Cecil, Charlie, Patrick, and Kevin, all uh, ended up uh, with the uh, Irish followed, first of all, went on Fianna, then uh, with the IRA, and were, went to Antwerp, followed my father into the anti treaty side, and uh, bore, some of them bore the consequences of that. Uh, Charlie died on O'Connell Street in 1922. Uh, Paddy was um, suffered with, he was a young fellow, a teenager, when he went on a 41 day hunger strike, and basically his stomach was destroyed for the rest of his life. And, he died with the uh, the ulcers. Um, uh, Kevin uh, became a doctor, and Cecil became a doctor. Uh, the nurses in the Malley family and in the Kearney family, my grandmother was a Kearney from Roscommon, <coughs> became uh, uh, nurses. Uh, and uh, my current second or third cousins in Roscommon are, are still in the nursing field. Um, just to give some background in terms of how Father felt about uh, what was what was happening and his own explanation for how he reacted to what was happening in the independence movement. He describes himself as, my attitude toward the fight was that of a sheltered individual from a conservative family, drawn from the secure seclusion of Irish life to the responsibility of action. 